So I'm Molly Stevens. I'm the Director of User Experience Research at Uber. Um, you heard one of my team members earlier, Nancy. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how we've had to scale the way we collect insights um, to match kind of the pace and growth of Uber. I can get this to go. So a little bit about me. Uh, I did my undergrad at Michigan in German language and literature uh, because that's what I could do to get out of school super fast. Um, but I worked at the computer lab and I got involved in technology um, and ultimately went to Georgia Tech where I got a master's in information design and technology um, and then moved on to Google for eight years, um, half in New York, half in Shanghai. Uh, and then I've been at Uber for the last two years. So user experience research, some of you might have worked with some of us, not all tech companies have our role. Um, and our job is really to, to collect insights about people to provide guidance to our product, managing, uh, product and engineering teams, to product marketing managers who you heard about before, um, data scientists and engineers, and to help make what we launch um, to truly match the needs of our users. So as you've heard, Uber's expansion has been incredibly rapid and incredibly global in nature. So it's one of the things that really attracted me to working here um, was the fact that Uber has been very deliberately global from a very early stage. Um, and it's made for some super interesting and challenging problems. So I'm gonna walk you through some of our primary user groups because I think there's a level of diversity there that you don't see from the outside. So the first part is about our riders, right? Um, we have an incredibly diverse number and scale of riders around the globe. So who here has used Uber when traveling? And who's used it internationally? Yeah, a lot of you guys actually. Um, so I found that using Uber internationally is just magical, right? You get to a place where you probably don't speak the language, you might not know the city, and you have a safe ride that you feel comfortable with, you're being tracked, and you can actually see that the destination matches what you might have possibly been able to mispronounce in some way um, in the past. So um, that's been fantastic. The second area is drivers. So we have full-time, part-time, and as you just heard, we have fleet drivers. Um, I'm actually a driver. Um, I love driving for Uber. It's super fun. Um, and as Nancy talked about, we also have um, deaf or hard of hearing drivers um, in the U.S. and around the world, a population that would have had a much, difficult, much more difficult time finding ways to earn consistently, um, except for the Uber opportunity. Uh, you heard a little bit about eaters and restaurants. So our Uber Eats and Uber Everything business is growing like wildfire. Um, one of the interesting things I think about is um, I go to a small local restaurant and I think about the overhead for them to have to hire a driver, manage the schedule, get someone to deliver. Now these smaller restaurants can have a much larger impact because they can use Uber Eats to make deliveries all around town. And then we have the communities where we operate. So the, the heart of the business is really, you know, providing access in these cities. Um, this is my mother. Um, she recently had hip replacement surgery. Uh, she lives in Oregon. So I went up there for a week and I was able to support her. And then I had to come back down here to the Bay Area. There was no one to take her to her doctor's appointments. She can't drive for four to eight weeks, I think they said. So I set her up with her Uber account, got her going, and she's been using that to get to all of her appointments, which means she has access to healthcare that would have been challenging for her in the past. So looking at that healthcare use case is a very interesting one and very personal. So given that wide range of users and kind of all of that complexity of language, location, transportation, background, how have we taken our fairly small research team and really been able to scale globally. Um, so there's six main ways that we've been focused on. And if you think about these, these could be ap applicable within your organization in terms of how you um, collect insights, even if they're not um, by UX researchers. So the first one is around cooperation and collaboration. So at Uber, we have a large number of kind of insights organizations, as I call them, data science, marketing, PMM, operations teams in the cities where we're located um, and cooperating and collaborating with them on honing in on what we're going to study, what do we already know, how can we build up principles around those things um, has really helped us make sure that we're targeting the right things at the right time. 
the second thing we've done is around scaling the team. So obviously we get bigger, we need to hire people, right? Um, that, that's kind of obvious. But one thing I've focused on a lot is hiring in a diverse range of skills and backgrounds. So because we have such a diverse population, we need to be as close to representing that as we can be, and also in terms of our skills. So we've hired survey experts, um, people who specialize in ethnography, anthropology, field work, um, and also people who specialize in certain types of domains. So we recently hired someone who focuses on trust and safety, people who focus on privacy. We're looking at, um, at accessibility and other areas like that so we can cover a much wider scope of topics and do a better job of representing our users. The third thing we've done is around um, instituting in-app sampling. So uh, when I joined Uber nearly two years ago, um, we were emailing out a lot of surveys to say, for example, drivers. Hey, we noticed our data scientists tell us that you use this feature. Um, tell us how you like this feature. Well, there are a lot of problems with that as a method. The first is a lot of our drivers don't read email. I'm sure you all get emails from Uber that you read voraciously every day, right? <laughs> um, the second thing is, is that um, there's this thing called retrospective recall, which is people will imagine a story or make up a story about how they think they used a feature in the past and the longer it's been the wilder the story is so if it's been a week or two they probably actually don't recall properly what they said so we instituted in-app sampling so that when people interact with features that we care about and they're safe so they're not in a situation where throwing them a survey would be a bad situation going 40 miles an hour down the road then we you know we check to say like, hey, you use this feature. What do you think about it? Can you tell us more? Um, and that way we've been able to get better data that's more realistic. It's also live and it's global. So we're able to do this across all the countries where we operate. And just briefly, since one of the other talks was talking about satisfaction or net promoter type scores, one of the things we've also moved away is um, internally mailed out net promoter score and focusing more um, driver satisfaction or rider satisfaction. So trying to understand, you know, instead of asking, would you be willing, um, would you refer a friend or family to drive for Uber, which in some cases, as you saw, there aren't people in their neighborhood who have cars, you know, making sure that we're asking them better questions about satisfaction. The fourth thing we've done is looking at scaling the capabilities of our teams in the field. So training non-researchers. So finding uh, the operations folks in the, in the locations who are really passionate about gathering data and um, finding out ways to help them with training and guidance on how they can do a better job of collecting data in country and then funneling that back to us. The fifth thing we've done is around scalable research teams. So as Nancy was talking about this, we've embedded researchers in local markets where we know we have a lot of demand and we know that we'll have a lot of um, benefit to really building something that's super relevant for that market and really you know, building a regular steady cadence for that. And the sixth thing we've done, as Nancy was also talking about, is looking to build some uh, regional UX principles that we can start to apply when things are being designed, right? So a PM comes to us, they say they're building a feature for Brazil and India, what should we do? We know what kinds of things we need to change about communication styles, about initial interactions, about their expectations on where the data is going and what's happening. So just in a quick summary, here's the top six things that we've been doing to help um, scale the user experience research team's impact across um, product and engineering. I expect if you came back in a year and I gave this talk again, we'd have a wide range of additional methods because what I'm finding is that things change so fast at Uber, we're always looking for new ways to understand our users um, and to do it more deeply. So thank you very much. <laughs>